Hey, welcome back to Brighter Rays. We are looking at a study in Genesis chapter 37. Today we're in verses 29 through 36, and we're looking at the cover-up here, uh, the cover-up of the brothers of Joseph for their selling him into slavery. And uh, so they don't want to get in trouble, so they have to make up a story. So that's what we're looking at today. So read the end of the last chapter, and then let's get started here. So there's a question in this passage here from Reuben, uh, because Reuben goes back to the pit, and presumably he missed the selling of Joseph. Where he was at, we're not told, but he doesn't know that Joseph's gone, because when he goes back, he looks in the cistern, and he's not there. And so when he sees that Joseph's gone, he tears his clothes in a rage, and returns to his brothers and says, the boy is gone, and I, where shall I go? Now, he's the firstborn, remember, he, he's Reuben. Is he supposed to go back to their father and tell them that he allowed them to sell Joseph into slavery? You know, what is he supposed to do now? <laughs> you know, he's, he's like, I'm, the, I'm Reuben, I'm the firstborn, I'm going to go back and tell my father Jacob that I allowed... Uh, my brothers to sell Joseph, the favorite son, into into slavery. You know, I'm toast. I'm, I'm going to be in more trouble than I already am. In. Who's Reuben thinking about? Thinking about Joseph? No, he's thinking about himself, which we see has been an issue for Jacob as well. You know, they both, most of these, this family is very much self-centered. Because you don't see Re Reuben saying, hey, let's go after the caravan and get him back. You know, that would be the right thing, right? No, he doesn't say that. He's, he, he, he was content with Joseph being gone. He doesn't, he's, he's not upset that Joseph's gone. So far as much as it concerns him, right? Reuben will remind his brothers many years later what he was feeling in this moment, which is a very, we don't always have the insight into the feelings of the people of the Bible. And so this is one of them here, which is very cool. Because he says, "Did I not tell you to s not to sin against the boy, but you did not, but you did not listen." So now there comes a reckoning for his blood. See, he was afraid of the reckoning. That's what he was afraid of. He was scared of what would happen to him because of Joseph. Their answer is to go back to what they planned to do if they had killed Joseph. Right? They say, "Well, let's take his robe and pretend that he had been killed by a wild animal." So, you know, Reuben is like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> now I'm going to get in trouble for this. And so he's like, I told you not to do this. Now there's going to be a reckoning. Now we're in trouble. Uh, you know, because they figure, well, he's got sold into slavery. He's probably dead in slavery. So they're like, man, now I'm in trouble. Now we, now when they, you know, when they get to Egypt and they're going through the trials that they're going through there, he's like, this is why I told you not to do this, because now we're going to have to pay that's what he means when he says, what am I going to do? He's not saying, well, not what, you know, I miss Joseph so much. We love him so much. We should go save him. We should, you know, oh, I'm going to, they don't say, he doesn't say that. He's, he just is thinking about himself. Now, what am I going to do? You know, I told you not to do this because there's a reckoning. <laughs> and so we see that that's the heart of Reuben here. Now, the brothers send the robe that they took from Joseph. They tore it up and then did it in the blood. And then sent they sent the robe to their father and asked that he identify it. Jacob sees the robe and believes their deception. The irony cannot be lost on us, right? He's the heel grabber, the deceiver Jacob is. So the discipline of God just keeps building on him. You know, he spent his early life, his, you know, the first 70-odd years, being the deceiver, being the cheat. And now he spent the rest of his life being the one who people cheat against. You know, the one who cheats, who's being cheated. And Laban did it, and now his sons are going to do it to him. So, you know, Jacob hears it, he believes the lies, he tears his garments in grief and puts on sackcloth and, and mourns for many days, it says. And his sons and his daughters all come, and they try to comfort him, but he refuses. You know, and you think about it, his sons must have been really poor comforters because they're concealing the truth. They're concealing what they've done. And then they're going to try to console their father's pain. Like, they're the ones that caused the pain. So how good of a comforter can they be? I'm not very sure. But 
if you think about it, they were not the best people to comfort. <laughs> it was their fault that what was going on was going on. So now Jacob vows to go down to Sheol or to the grave in mourning. And Jacob's preference and love for Rachel has spilled over into Joseph. And now he had lost both of them. Jacob does not see how there will be any more days of joy in his life. You know, his joy is over. What time he has remaining in his life will be spent mourning. That's it. He has hardened his heart with his grief. This is a common occurrence. As you well know, Jacob's desire to stay in mourning has consumed the lives of many people. That is not what God has called us to do, though. We mourn, and we mourn with those who mourn, but we do not mourn as if we're ones without hope. God is our hope. We have hope. And so we mourn, yes, we do. But yet we mourn as those who have hope, and we don't stay in mourning forever. We don't vow that we will mourn until we die. That's what we've been called to do. We're called to mourn, but then to follow Christ. Now, back in verse 36, uh, you know, verse 36 is another one of those connecting verses we've seen before throughout Genesis. And we're told that Joseph is sold to a man named Potiphar, who is the captain of the guard to the Pharaoh. So Joseph does not end up in some obscure house in Egypt, but in an officer's house. And this sets us up for the continuation of the story in chapter 39. But before we get there, Moses takes us on a tangent. In this chapter, Moses tells us about Judah's role in Joseph, you know, in Joseph's entering into Egypt. So we see Judah in, in his role in this and what happens to Joseph. And the next we're going to see a disturbing story. But in it we find out about the birth of Perez and how that came about. And that's important, right? Perez is important. You look up Perez and you'll understand. If you know uh, some of the genealogies of the Bible, you'll know why Perez is very important to Scripture, to the, the plan of salvation. So, we are going to stop there, and we'll conclude our study uh, next time. So come on back, and we'll take a look at just some ideas that we need to think about from this passage.